Hello everyone, GM, GM. Welcome to the Solana Changelog. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team, and today I've got Jonas with me. How you doing, Jonas? Hey, Nick. I'm doing great. You ready for the Changelog? You want to you wanna talk about some of the commits you saw this week? I'm ready. So yeah, we found a few commits. So um, remove outdated Solana Ledger UDEF binary. That doesn't sound like super interesting, but what you can see here is that someone is trying to build a Nix OS, which is really cool, which we're going to talk about later as well. Because currently it's very hard to get deterministic builds on Solana, but there's a few options. You can use Docker and you can also use NixOS. So I'm very excited that uh, people trying this out. I also tried it last week. Maybe we come up with an example at some point. Um, yeah, NixOS is really cool. You can, it's like a, it's a very small Linux subsystem basically where you can run your builds in. And the next thing we had. It's not my operating system. Don't get me wrong. So after everyone builds their programs now in Nick's operating system, we have a, a very small change here. So uh, John Chinko is uh, moving the um, logging uh, functions into its own crate just to clean up a little bit. But you may need to use a different import now in your programs. So it's like Solana message syscalls now. And then this one's not quite a commit this week, but it's it's an open pull request for the Agave installer. So as everyone's going through the process of updating to Agave and all the version two kind of stuff, you need to update your local CLI as well. When you run the Agave installer in order to use the Agave tool suite, as opposed to the previous tool suite that was uh, put out by Salon Labs, uh, there's a chance that it could remove your local key pairs. So your .config slash Solana directory, I think it wipes the entire directory, but make sure you back up your uh, local key pair, so your id.json that, that your Solana CLI uses by default. Back that up before you do the installation, just in case. Um, hopefully this PR will get merged and the script will get updated to sort of not do that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I heard a few people that it happened to, some others didn't. But yeah, be careful. Just back up your key pair from your cache folder. Yeah. All right. And then on to some of the resources for this week. We've got this one, Old Faithful. We've talked about Project Yellowstone and Old Faithful on the changelog before. Uh, but last week, actually, Brian Long from Triton and the organization that's sort of behind Project Yellowstone, he was on the core dev call and he gave this amazing demo of Project Old Faithful. Specifically, what Old Faithful is, is it's storing the entire Solana ledger history on Filecoin. And what Old Faithful now supports is you can run an entire RPC node off of Old Faithful and Yellow and and um, Filecoin as your your ledger history. So you can do all of the things like get signatures for account and all of those like historical access sort of RPC methods. You can actually do that directly off of Filecoin. It is definitely slower than having a, access to a full big table instance, but you can sort of pick and choose what information you want to pull in and the amount of data you have cached locally, as opposed to having the entire big table instance. So this is this was super cool, and the the core dev call was also recorded. Um, it should be published, I think, and uh, so everyone can check that out. Cool. Yeah, maybe we can put a link in the description as well. But this is so cool, like because at the moment everyone uses the same big table thing basically, and now. You have it decentralized and Filecoin, everyone can use it. You can run your queries to it. It's really, really amazing. And then we have a new version of Steel. So uh, you might have heard like the native yeah. um, SDK that Hard Hat Chat is uh, working on, and he has now a version two. So I think this is really, really cool. Uh, we have some program examples for it as well now in the Solana program examples under the developer repository. Um, but what it's missing still is an IDL. So if any one of you is like, uh, feels like coding over the weekend, maybe you could just uh, add an IDL for it. I think it would be uh, really help its composability. Oh yeah, you could use something like Kodama to add IDLs. Did you try it out already? No, I haven't tried it out yet, but I, I think I might this weekend. I might tinker around. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely nice. So then we've got these updates here to the Solana Explorer. Noah Gundotra, at, now at Solana Foundation, he's been chugging away, making all sorts of really useful updates to the Explorer. So huge shout out to Noah. But if you notice here, we're looking at the token program, specifically token 22, token extension program. And there's some new information in here. We have verified builds displayed here that this program has been verified. And then we have multi-sig support. So the multi-sig, this, uh, this program has an upgrade authority that's a multi-sig. And you can see here, it's in particular using the squad's V3 multi-sig program. You see all the multi-sig information, all the signers and everything. So this is super cool. And then there's also verified builds are now displayed in the Solana Explorer, which is totally open source. So anyone can see if, uh, 
how to how this works and, and look at it under the hood. But uh, Jonas, do you want to talk about these verified builds? Yeah, so this is a feature I'm actually super excited about. So it's being built by uh, Ottersec and Ellipsis Labs. And uh, what it allows you to do is basically to verify that your program that you deployed is actually built from its source code. So what you basically do is you build your program in a Docker container or in maybe later in a Nix container or something like this. And then you can verify your repository uh, towards a repository. So you put your URL of the repository and then you can, uh, it creates a PDA on chain that writes all the data that's needed to verify the program. And then you basically check that what you built in from the repository has the same hash as what is uploaded on chain. And that is exactly what you also see in the Solana Explorer now. Basically what the Solana Explorer does, it does a call to get this um, hash, this binary hash, and then it uh, compares it to the on-chain hash. And then there's also a remote API for it. So you can basically send it to the Ottersec API. And what they do, they also build it in the same Docker container in the backend and make sure that the hashes are correct. So, and this is completely uh, permissionless. Everyone can verify a program. If you go to the next one here, you can see this is the PDA that is created on chain. And if you expand the arguments here, then you can see that actually um, all the information that you need to build this program from the repository link is here. And then you can just call the command like uh, Solana verify, uh, verify from repo, I think it's called. And then you can actually be 100% sure that the code on chain is exactly the same um, as you have, um, uh, if, as you have in the repository. So this is really cool and gives you like way more. First of all, it shows more open source, um, projects. And then you can also be sure that the code is running that is actually in the repository. Um, it shouldn't be necessary be more secure, but uh, it's uh, definitely more verifiable. And I think it's a, it's a super cool thing. Yeah, having all these verified builds and all this work, it's it's been a lot of work from a lot of different organizations and uh, having it displayed directly in the Explorer and getting more adoption within the ecosystem is going to be really, really great to see. Yeah, try it out and see if you have any bugs. Um, it's still a little bit in progress, but it's already very well usable. Absolutely. All right, on to the SIMD for this week. We've got SIMD 186 that's opened by HANA from Anza and it's transaction data size specification. This is sort of actually an uneventful SIMD. It actually should be relatively um, simple to get uh, approved. Basically, the, the problem statement here is the way that transaction size, the total size that a transaction uses, the way it's calculated is sort of non-standardized, non-specific. There's no specification for it. And Han was basically proposing a specification for it. Um, and including handles some interesting things that um, currently exist now where sometimes certain accounts will get double counted. So it'll solve some of those problems, but then it'll make it so the account data calculation, the algorithm, super simple algorithm actually, the way that's gonna be calculated can be standardized across validator clients, which will make it a lot easier for any validator client to implement it. So that way all the information can be correct. Because if, if there's any mismatch, then the transaction just fail. Yeah, it makes sense. That's nice. So if you have any comments to this, you can always comment on the SIMDs. I think there's some discussion already. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and last but not least, we have our Stack Exchange, uh, exchange Heroes. So this time uh, leading is Mitch, actually. And then we have Jimmy, we have Chalda, we have Callum, and Wickham is back. And yeah, so whatever you help here, uh, it helps the current developers and the future developers. So super happy to see so many people participating in Stack Exchange. And you get these nice points. So uh, I'm always happy when I get these little green points at the back, actually. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week on the Change Log, and we'll catch you next week. See you next week, everybody. Bye.